The Lands Between as we know it is a hostile world filled with horrific beasts, warring factions, and cosmic horrors. On top of those challenges, we're often met with deceitful characters, all attempting to use our power and knowledge to further their own interests. That said, the concept of true loyalty is rather rare in this land, save for the shadows of Empyreans. This is why the Bloodhound Knights are such a curious oddity. Who are they? Where did they come from? And why do they carry the title of Bloodhound? We hope to answer these questions, or at the very least provide our interpretations. Let's first glean what we can from their armor and weaponry. The Bloodhound Knight found at the Gelmir Hero's Grave in Mount Gelmir drops the entire Bloodhound set upon being defeated. The helm reads, Metal helm with a pointed beak, worn by the Bloodhound Knights. The Bloodhound Knights are trained as hunters and known to be unshakable trackers. Without the use of language, each knight chooses his own master. Once the decision has been made, the knight stays loyal for life. From this item alone, we start to paint a picture of what drives these knights to fight with such unending ferocity. It seems that each Bloodhound Knight we encounter in our journey is wholly devoted to a master of their choosing, displaying unshakable loyalty to their master's cause. The same Bloodhound Knight drops the Bloodhound Claws. Though this weapon gives little insight into the overall lore of the knights, we can learn much more simply by observing how they fight. Each battle with the Bloodhound Knights is sure to distress even the most powerful of Tarnished. Approaching on all fours, their beastly appearance and frightening speed rival the intensity of even the Crucible Knights. Through the power of the Bloodhound's step, these knights are capable of moving at such a high speed that they almost appear to be teleporting. Along with their unrivaled speed, they attack our Tarnished with the fury and bloodlust of the most ferocious beasts in the lands between. Due to the beastly nature display in combat, and their inability to communicate without the use of language, we believe that the Bloodhound Knights are far from human, and perhaps don't even originate from the Lands Between at all. Sometime prior to our arrival in the Lands Between, the floating city of Faramazula was struck by some kind of cosmic cataclysm. A fallen star shattered the city into fractured pieces which fell below to the Lands Between. Not only do we see the fallout of this event by observing the many pieces of the kingdom jutting from the hills of Limgrave, or the colossal knights that litter the lands, but by the displaced creatures that now live alongside the natural flora and fauna of the lands between. Within the Groveside Cave, we encounter a beastman of Faramazula, hailing from a doomed city in the sky. We don't believe it's much of a stretch to assume, based on their behavior, that the Bloodhound Knights also fell from the City of Beasts. Whether this is true or not, the Hounds now wander the Lands Between, displaced from their home, searching for a master. The first Bloodhound Knight our Tarnished is most likely to encounter is Bloodhound Knight Darawil. Upon meeting Blythe for the first time, we're tasked with hunting Darawil, as he is nothing but a traitor and in need of a fitting end to his tail. We end up tracking Darawil to the forlorn Hound Everjail in South Limgrave. For his traitorous actions, Darawil has been eternally imprisoned. When we summon Blythe to fight alongside us, he says, Darawil, rotting in a cell is no true justice. No, this is where it ends for you. The Bloodhound Knights are known for their unshaking loyalty, and yet, Darawil is imprisoned and then hunted for some kind of betrayal. It's purely speculation, but we believe that at some point, Darawil had pledged his loyalty to Snow Witch Rani, which would explain Blythe's desire to slay him for treason if he left her service. As for who or what caused him to betray this proposed union, we have a loose idea. It's possible that when Rani purposely destroyed her own body, Darawil considered his service to her to be complete, and so he searched for a new master. Perhaps Darawil, being a beastly hound, simply didn't recognize the scent of his original master now that she inhabited a doll. This betrayal of her service would certainly have Blythe on the hunt. Another Bloodhound Knight can be found at the Lakeside Crystal Cave in Liernia. Just after defeating him, we meet an Albinoric woman, Latena. She says, Foul tarnished, what do you want? I told the all-hearing brute that I possess no such medallion. If we have spoken with Albus in the village of Albinoric, he gives us the right half of the Halig Tree medallion to give to Latena. Based on her dialogue, it seems that this particular bloodhound was searching for the Halig Tree medallions. With the bloodhound knights being loyal servants to a single master, 
were met with a question. Who would task this hound with retrieving passage to the Halleck tree? This is obviously more speculation, but based on what's given to us through context, we have an idea here as well. Thanks to our community, we actually pulled this video and wanted to make an important update. When Latena says the all-hearing brute, she is referring to Sir Gideon Ofnir. When telling Gideon about Mikola's egg, he says, If he continues his slumber within the cocoon, all will be well, but perhaps it would be safer to destroy it. Mikola is the one thing that remains a mystery to me. This, along with other dialogue from Gideon, shows that information about Melania and Mikola was something out of his reach, and for a man like Gideon, that was unacceptable. We believe it's possible that the Bloodhound Knight within this cave chose Gideon as his master, and was left behind to keep Latina where she is, cut off from anyone who had knowledge of the Halleck Tree Medallion, since she herself did not have it. Thanks again to our community for catching this important note. The final bit of lore we learned regarding the Bloodhound Knights is also found within the Gelmir Hero's Grave. Found within a chest past the Bloodhound Knight is the spirit ash of Bloodhound Knight Fla. It reads, Spirit of a Bloodhound Knight they called the Rabid Stray, Fla vowed that there was only one lord he would ever serve, a true king, and so the Rabid Stray never found a master. Referring to Fla as a rabid stray further propels the narrative that these beastly knights truly live up to the loyal canines of their namesake. It's clear that the bloodhounds are rather cautious of choosing who they will serve. Lucky for our tarnished, Fla appears to believe that we are capable of fulfilling our destiny of becoming Elden Lord. While there isn't too much within the text of Elden Ring to give us a clear picture of the bloodhound knights, their intentions, and their place within this world, the context where we find them seems to be the biggest factor in unraveling their mystery, understanding their affinity towards whom they believe to be a fit master, as well as the intentions of said master, is ultimately how we formulated our findings. Whether these knights truly are fallen hounds from a shattered city, or simply lost warriors searching for a purpose, we can take solace in the fact that true, unfailing loyalty isn't a concept completely lost on the inhabitants of the lands between. Let us know in the comments if you have your own theories about the Bloodhound Knights. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss our next community chosen topic, the Tree Sentinels. We look forward to welcoming you back for more Elden Lore.